torque is the beginning of our physics discussion on the dynamics of rotational motion. In other words, why do objects rotate? Let's get started with a drawing. First, I've drawn a fixed object. Attached to it by a hinge or an axis of rotation is a horizontal lever which is free to rotate. Suppose I apply a force called FA perpendicular to the lever. Suppose also that I apply this force at a distance RA away from the axis of rotation of the lever. Then the torque on the lever denoted by the Greek letter tau is the product of FA and RA. One important note here is that this is only true if the applied force is perpendicular to RA. Some useful vocabulary is this. Torque is also known as the moment of the force about the axis, and RA is sometimes called the lever arm or the moment arm. Right, so with our theoretical foundations, let's go to the lab. My homemade lever arm is just like the one from our drawing. I'm pulling on a string attached to a screw that is 10 centimeters away from the axis of rotation. There are other screws, one at 20, 30, and another at 40 centimeters. You may have noticed another screw at 3.7 centimeters. That one we'll talk about soon. Next up is our force probe calibration. Here I've attached a one kilogram mass to the force probe, and I'm just checking that it registers about 10 newtons. And it does. This follows directly from Newton's second law, which states that the net force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity near Earth's surface is 9.8 meters per second squared. Rounding to 10 makes math easy, and our force probe should read about 10 newtons. The last thing I need to do for setup is to zero the force probe. I want to hang masses from each screw, but I want the force probe to ignore the mass of the lever arm itself. Right, so finally, the good stuff. Here, I take a 200 gram mass and hang it on each screw at 10 centimeter increments. This way, I'll have a constant force of two newtons pulling down, but at different lever arm lengths. Meanwhile, the force probe will monitor the force required to pull up on the 10 centimeter screw and keep the lever stationary. At the first screw, nothing special is happening. It's essentially confirming Newton's second law since I've zeroed the lever arm. The fun happens as I move the mass further from the axis of rotation. When I double the lever arm from 10 to 20 centimeters, the force on the probe also doubles from just over 2 newtons to just over 4 newtons. At 30 centimeters, we observe about 6.3 on the force probe, and at 40 centimeters, we observe about 8.4 newtons. Welcome back to the blackboard. To understand what we did in the lab, we need to add some things to our theoretical understanding. Multiple forces, and thus multiple torques, can operate on an object. So let's call this force in blue Fm for mass with lever arm Rm. Just as F net is the sum of all forces on an object, tau net is the sum of all torques on an object. In our picture here, the net torque is the sum of torque A plus torque M, and we simply plug in our equations of torque defined earlier. Then we mix in some physical law, or a special case of physical law, called rotational inertia. For now, let's stick with the special case that says, if an object is at rotational rest, um, or it's not rotating, then the net torque on the object is zero. With this, we can rearrange our equations. And at this point, I'll note that I did forget a negative sign, but don't worry, I eventually notice and I put it in. 
So a bit of algebra, then bam, we have a prediction or an explanation for what we see on the force probe. We're problem solving, so let's do sign conventions and givens. Let's let up be positive for our givens. Let's note our constants first. The force on the lever due to the mass is negative two newtons because it is directed downwards. And the force probe always pulls up 10 centimeters or 0 0.1 meters away from the axis of rotation. In a table, we'll record the various radii that we hung the mass from and the resultant force measured on the probe. Using our theoretical equation, we find the experiment aligns quite well with our expectations. Moreover, we see the linear dependence on R that we expect from torque. What remains is a commitment to errors and uncertainty, which I cheekily leave to the audience. All right, let's wrap up with some qualitative good stuff. What is the tension in the biceps brachii and brachialis muscles during bicep curls? Our apparatus is perfect for attempting to answer that question. That screw at 3.7 centimeters that I mentioned earlier models the lever arm distance at which these muscles would insert into the bones of the forearm. Notice how much higher the forces are in the probe in this setup. Thus, these muscles are operating at a mechanical disadvantage. If you want to save money on weights, see if you can find a way to increase the length of your forearm. Once you've seen it in one context, as we have, you'll probably see it everywhere you look. Here, I'm playing around with my drying rack. Have you ever wondered why they put doorknobs on the opposite side of the hinges? The answer is torque. <laughs> and finally, what happens if force and the lever arm are not parallel? Well, why not try it out? In summary, we discussed a special case of torque in which the applied force is perpendicular to the moment arm. We also discussed the sum of all torques on the lever and that if an object is not rotating, then the net torque is zero. And for your reference, some of the more general versions of the equations we discussed are found right on the right here.